On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks return back home to take on the Calgary Flames following their three-game road trip. But first, I'll talk about all the Hawks prospects that are taking part in the 2024 Men's Frozen Four Tournament. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome on into another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can go and give me a follow on X at Jack Bushman too. And make sure to also go and follow my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey. So that way you can get all of the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And also just a reminder to everyone who's watching this on YouTube right now, please Go and smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe to the Lockdown Blackhawks YouTube channel as well, all of which is 100% free. It won't cost you anything and really does help me out tremendously as I'm trying to grow the show right now. And I also got to let you know, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Make sure to go and download the Game Time app right now and when you do, Create an account and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps to get $20 off to sporting events, concerts, or theater events near you. All right, good morning, everyone. Again, thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. To kick things off here this morning, going back to Friday's episode, the final episode of last week, where I outlined all of the NCAA conference tournaments that were going down over the weekend. Frank Nazar and the Michigan Wolverines duking it out with the Michigan State Spartans for the Big Ten Championship. Ryan Green, Macklin Celebrini, and the Boston University Terriers in a big time heavyweight tilt with Boston College for the Hockey East Championship. And then Aiden Thompson and the Denver Pioneers as well, taking on the Omaha Lancers in the NCHC title game. It was a spectacular weekend for several different sports. I mean, you had hockey, NBA, and college basketball. You had the NCAA conference tournaments going down. Spring training is heating up for baseball right around the corner. And it's absolutely why March is always my favorite month of the season. But getting into these Big Ten title games or these conference championship games that happened over the weekend, starting with the Big Ten title game. Frank Nazar had himself an unbelievable performance. He kicked off the scoring to put Michigan ahead one to nothing, added a huge goal later on in the game to tie it up. But unfortunately, despite his efforts, the Michigan Wolverines did wind up coming just short, falling 5-4 to four in overtime to the Michigan State Spartans as they were not able to win their third consecutive Big Ten championship game. Ryan Green, Macklin Celebrini, and Boston University also were not able to take down the number one team in all of college hockey. Will Smith, Gabe Perot, Ryan Leonard, and the Boston College Eagles. They ended up coming through with the win over Boston University in the Hockey East title game despite a two-point performance out of Ryan Green as well. But on the bright side, Aiden Thompson and the Denver Pioneers were able to take down Omaha in the NCHC title game. So at least one Blackhawks prospect comes away with the conference championship this year. But regardless of those results, the Hawks are still going to have several prospects taking part in the 2024 Frozen Four tournament. And all of these teams that I just outlined being in the conference championship games, even though Michigan and Boston University wound up falling short, They're still going to have a crack at the big dance. They're still going to be taking part in the 2024 Men's Frozen Four Tournament. The Blackhawks have a really good showing here in this year's tournament. Obviously, like I outlined, Ryan Green's playing for BU. Aiden Thompson's playing for Denver. We got Frank Nazar playing for Michigan. Oliver Moore, Sam Renzel, and the Minnesota Golden Gophers will also be taking part in the NCAA tournament. And then the University of Massachusetts wound up sneaking into one of the final spots. I know I don't really talk about Liam Gorman here all that often, but he is technically a Blackhawks prospect, kind of has been a tweener for the Minutemen all season long, um, has bounced between a 
fourth line wing spot and being an extra man out of the lineup hasn't really put up spectacular numbers and hasn't been a consistent piece of their lineup even and quite honestly I would be surprised if the Blackhawks uh, extend an entry-level contract offer to Liam Gorman considering um, his senior season after transferring from Princeton hasn't really been all that notable and considering all the forwards that they have in their prospect pool, I just don't really see there being room or the need to go and sign someone like Liam Gorman, but he and the Minutemen are going to be taking part in this tournament. They sneak their way in, and unfortunately, uh, the Providence Friars, Tage Harding, Connor Kelly, and Providence were one of the final teams bumped out um, along with St. Cloud State. They were on the outside looking in a little bit more than Providence was, but yeah, no Tage Harding, no Connor Kelly in this year's NCAA tournament. Despite a really strong season from the Providence Friars, uh, they didn't make it because of automatic bids from winning conference tournaments. And then St. Cloud State ended up crumbling down the stretch a little bit. And um, as I've talked about a few times, Dominic Bassey wasn't even their starter as a senior in the most important stretch of the season. So kind of a tough sign for him, but even with Providence and St. Cloud State not making it, the Blackhawks still very well represented with six prospects taking part in this year's tournament. Let's talk about how, um, who they're all going to be playing here in the first round since we do have the schedules for this year's Frozen Four already, and we've gotten the bracket. First matchup involving Blackhawks prospects it's going to be on Thursday, March 28th, just two days away from now at 1 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. It's going to be Aiden Thompson in the Denver Pioneers taking on Liam Gorman in the UMass Minutemen. That's going to be a very interesting first matchup. The only first round matchup where uh, a couple of Blackhawks prospects are going head to head with one another. Next game that involves a Hawks prospect is going to be Ryan Green and Boston University taking on RIT Thursday, March 28th. 28th at 4 p.m. Central Time, and that game will be televised on ESPNU. So if you want to go and watch any of these games, if you want to get a peek at some of these Blackhawks prospects in action in the most meaningful games of the year, you can go and easily do so on national television. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, Oliver Moore and Sam Renzel will be taking on the Omaha Lancers on Thursday night. It's going to be a 7.30 p.m. Central Time puck drop on ESPNU. And then Frank Nazar and the Michigan Wolverines will be taking on the North Dakota Fighting Sioux on Friday, March 29th at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. That game will also be televised on ESPNU. And if Boston University and the Minnesota Golden Gophers wind up winning their first round games, that could be a, or that will be the matchup if they win in the second round. So we could potentially see Ryan Green and Macklin Celebrini take on Oliver Moore, Sam Renzel, and the Golden Gophers in the second round. And we could also potentially see a Big Ten title game rematch between Frank Nazar and the Michigan Wolverines and Artem Levshunov and the Michigan State Spartans. Levshunov projected to be one of the top 10 selections in the 2024 NHL draft, but the tournament officially gets underway on Thursday, just 48 hours from now, Blackhawks fans. And again, if you want to get a peek at some of these big name college hockey prospects in the Blackhawks organization, this is a perfect time to do so. The games are not going to get any more crucial. All 16 squads on the quest for a national championship, but there could only be one winner. Go and comment down below if you have an opinion as to, uh, what team is going to come away with it? I personally think it's going to be hard to see anyone take down the Boston College Eagles, but I do think Macklin Celebrini, Ryan Green, and the BU Terriers could be out for some revenge. There are a slew of other good teams that are uh, going to be competing for the title as well. So go and let me know as to your prediction of who's going to win the NCAA championship this year down in the comment section. But there is my preview of the 2024 Men's Frozen Four, which again gets underway on Thursday afternoon. Coming up in just a moment here, I still have to get into a preview of tonight's matchup for the Blackhawks as they return home to take on the Calgary Flames. But first, I got to talk to you all about game time. And you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. And that's why game time is the perfect place for you to go and purchase your tickets. Because game time is the fastest, easiest, and cheapest way for you to buy tickets to all the sporting events, concerts, theater events, whatever it may be whatever 
event requires tickets around you, Game Time is always the perfect place to check. And I personally have been using Game Time since I was 16, 17 years old, probably close to a decade now since I was going down to the UC to watch Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves in the heyday of the Blackhawks dynasty era, or still to this day when I go down to Wrigley Field to go and watch Cubs games during the summer, or if I'm traveling in another city and want to go and see a concert with one of my buddies or want to go and see a comedy event. I actually just used game time in the fall when I was out in Las Vegas to go and see a concert with one of my good friends. I love how they show you images of every seat in the house before you purchase your ticket so you know exactly what to expect when you're arriving. They also have flash deals that'll give you even cheaper tickets than usual. I highly recommend you all go and check out Game Time right now. And when you do, make sure to create an account and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps. That way you can get $20 off to sporting events, concerts, or theater events near you with your first purchase. Yes, you heard me right. You can get $20 off to come and see Connor Bedard at the United Center before the end of the season. All you have to do, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed, Game Time. The Chicago Blackhawks are back in action tonight and take on the Calgary Flames with a 7.30 p.m. Central Time puck drop at the United Center. It's the third and final meeting between these two teams this season, and you can catch all of the Blackhawks' <clears throat> hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. All you have to do is just search Blackhawks. Segment two, like I just said, following their three-game road trip out west. The Blackhawks return back to Chicago tonight with only 11 games left on the schedule, believe it or not, Hawks fans. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty here for a lot of you. Like me, it's probably a bit of a sigh of relief as watching this Hawks team through 71 games has been pretty taxing, but now I can see the light at the end of the tunnel starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And quite honestly, once the season wraps up, that's when it's going to be the start of a lot more intriguing conversations surrounding what the Hawks will do this offseason, uh, the NHL draft, getting into mock drafts and uh, prospects, player profiles and whatnot. As sad as it sounds, I'm kind of looking forward to the end of the regular season for the Blackhawks so I don't have to watch this uh dreadful team, you know, two to three times every single week, but they do have an opportunity coming off of a monstrous comeback victory in their last outing on Saturday night against San Jose. They have an opportunity to return back to Chicago with some wind in their sails, kind of have an opportunity to go on a little bit of a run here as they'll be taking on the Calgary Flames here this evening. And it has been a struggle for Calgary really over since the last couple of months, but in particular, since it has been trade deadline time, we've seen them trade away players like Blackhawks legend Nikita Zadorov, uh, Chris Tanev also got dealt, Elias Lindholm, Noah Hannafin. I mean, their defense basically isn't even the same at this point in time. And after they made those moves and just based on how things were going for the Flames in the Pacific Division, felt like uh, after they made those trades, they kind of wove, were waving the white flags in the air, uh, kind of signaling that this is going to be the end of their season. It has not been a very good stretch for them, but for the Blackhawks here in the month of March, has every game been perfect that they've won? No, but they found a way to have now won five of their last 10 games. The Flames are three and seven in their last 10. So I just think it's a good opportunity for the Blackhawks to kind of take advantage of a team that's a little bit maybe down on themselves that isn't super intrigued um, or is really fighting for anything here the rest of the way. I just think this is a good chance for the Blackhawks, especially after what Luke Richardson did to them yesterday in practice, which I'll be getting into during segment three. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity for them to respond nicely and take advantage of, of a little bit of a slumping team here. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, this is going to be the final matchup between these two teams this season. The first meeting came back on January 7th at the United Center, where the Blackhawks beat the Calgary Flames 4-3. to The second meeting was an absolute snoozer, and it was during that uh, stretch prior to the All-Star break where the Blackhawks were getting shut out left and right. They got shut out three times in their final four games, in the last of which being a one to nothing defeat to the Calgary Flames in the final game before the All-Star 
all-star break. But like I said, the Hawks are 5-5-0 and over the last 10, while the Flames are 3-7-0. and So I think this is a good little get-right spot for the Hawks as they return home. But I am really interested to see how uh, this Blackhawks power play is going to fare because the the Flames do still have one of the best penalty kills in the entire NHL, despite uh, trading away some of their key pieces. They have the fifth best PK in the NHL, and the Blackhawks power play has been really working well over the last couple of weeks. I think it's a good little test for them here against the Flames. And also, the Flames defense certainly isn't, um, their defensemen certainly aren't as um, deep their defensive core isn't as deep as it was prior to trading, you know, Tanev and Zadorov and Noah Hannafin. Um, but their offense still does have some some good pieces like a Jonathan Huberdo, an Azem Kadri. Um, also have Blake Coleman. Um, they got some. They still have some good offensive pieces and some good young guys. So uh, I think. Uh, it's a good little, like I said, get right spot for the Blackhawks defenseman after a pretty shoddy outing in the first 20, 25 minutes against San Jose. They're going to have to be better if they want to hold down the Calgary Flames in their offense tonight. But getting into what we could see out of the Blackhawks lineup, it looked like Luke Richardson during the Monday practice was kind of trying to go with a little bit of a balanced lineup for the Hawks as he's been tinkering with things here over the last few games, trying to figure out some uh, good line combinations up top for the Hawks. Connor Bedard and Philip Kershev remain together. I think that's going to be the case throughout the rest of the regular season, but it's been a little bit of a revolving door on their left wing side, but getting a chance to play with them now is Ryan Donato. And I think he's absolutely deserved this opportunity because of all the energy and the hustle that he's brought to the table over the last couple of weeks. He's had a fantastic month of March himself. The production has been there. The effort level has been there. Um, and he's getting rewarded for it, and I think he absolutely deserves it. Hopefully he'll be able to keep that up along with Bedard and Kurashev here. And I know quietly the underlying numbers of Donato and Bedard together have actually been really good. I know Donato's not you know, a top-line winger that you would think should be up there next to Connor Bedard, but when he's gotten that chance, he's actually done pretty well. So curious to see how that's going to go against the Flames here this evening. Looks like Nick Foligno is going to be skating with Tyler Johnson and Taylor Radish. Uh, while Donato did get bumped up to the top line, I would have liked to see maybe uh, Donato, Johnson, and Radish run it back here against the Flames because that was kind of the trio that kick-started the Blackhawks' comeback in that game against the San Jose Sharks. That trio uh, connected for two goals late in the second period that cut the Blackhawks' deficit in half going into the third and really gave them some life with 20 minutes left to go. Um, but I don't mind seeing Nick Felino winding up with that spot Hopefully Taylor Radish, though, after a multi-point performance against the Sharks, I probably should have looked that up. I actually am going to look that up right now. I want to know when Taylor Radish's last multi-point game came from. And luckily, I can pull this up real quick. I look up so many Blackhawks players on hockey reference and all this stuff that I can just get to their games so fast. Taylor Radish game log. Here we go. Taylor Radish, it wasn't as long as ago as you'd think because. That was actually, yeah, okay. Taylor Radish's last multi-point game, and it's the only other one he's had this year, came on December 23rd against the St. Louis Blues. So um, nearly three, yeah, three months later, uh, he gets another multi-point game. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able to keep that up because obviously it has not been the type of season that Taylor Radish has wanted or that anyone was expecting out of him after he potted 20 goals last year, but hopefully he can at least uh, end it on a little bit of a high note here. Mackenzie Entwistle is back in the Blackhawks lineup uh, with Reese Johnson and Colin Blackwell, both still being out. He played in the game on Saturday against San Jose. and He's back skating with Lucas Reichel. Although I am happy to see Andreas Athanasiu centering that third line. If Reichel is going to be skating with uh, Mackenzie Antwistle, you at least got to give him some skill on that line. And I, I've mentioned that I want to see him play with Andreas Athanasiu through the rest of the regular season here. Those two have shown good chemistry with one another. And Reichel has brought his A game despite, you know, him only producing one assist, assist since being recalled from Rockford. The hustle 
the energy, the intensity, uh, the forecheck, the back check, the speed, the elusiveness, it's all been there. And if he continues to put together those performances, it's only a matter of time until the points follow suit with it. So would like to see Lucas Reichel come out with another good outing here against the Calgary Flames. And then Landon Slagger, Jason Dickinson, and Joey Anderson uh, round things out as the so so-called fourth line. Um, you can really make any of these uh, a fourth line or whatnot. It doesn't really matter the order that they're in, but undoubtedly Slagger, Dickinson, and Anderson is the shutdown trio that Richardson likes to put out there against uh, the opponent's top line. So that's going to be their role here tonight, probably against Jonathan Huberdo and the Calgary Flames. And then as I mentioned, Reese Johnson still in concussion protocol. We don't have much of an update on Colin Black. Well, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that he'll be able to return before the season comes to an end, but kind of based on uh, what I saw from that hit, I'm really not all that encouraged that that's going to be the case. On defense for the Blackhawks tonight, no surprise, Alex Vlasic, Seth Jones, top pairing for the Blackhawks. Vlasic has been phenomenal. Seth Jones has been phenomenal as well, really, over the last month or two. Since he's come back from that injury, man, he has been a different player. He's been playing with a different mindset. And for all the shit that Blackhawks fans give him, pardon my language, um, he's really answered the bell here in the second half. And I thought he did the same thing last year as well. The next challenge that I have for Seth Jones is being ready to go right out of the gate next year because for whatever reason, it, it does feel like he gets off to slow starts to seasons and then kind of rounds into form as the year progresses. He needs to be ready to go right out of the gate next year for the Blackhawks because uh, when he's playing on top of his game, it makes a world of difference for this team. And Alex Vlasic is going to need that in his second year as well next season. Kevin Korchinski, Jacob Megna, they're going to be the second pairing for the Hawks probably the rest of the way despite uh, Jacob Megna kind of returning to a seventh defenseman, a seventh defenseman caliber player uh, over the last few weeks for the Blackhawks after getting off to a really hot start. And then Wyatt Kaiser and Nikita Zaitsev to round things out on the back end with Jared Tenorti as the extra blue liner. Wyatt Kaiser, I thought, had a really sharp outing uh, against San Jose. Would like to see him follow that up with another good performance here against the Calgary Flames. In that, we don't have any confirmation as of now. I am recording this prior to the Blackhawks <clears throat> morning skate. Excuse me. I don't think, I'm sorry, Blackhawks fans, I don't think this is a horrible spot for Arvid Soderbloom. I really don't. It's the Blackhawks return home. I think that's where you'd preferably like to use him uh, the rest of the way. I won't be surprised if <clears throat> Peter Mrazek winds up in there, but I, I will admit I do think um, this is a potential Arvid Soderbloom game here against the Calgary Flames. All right. There are my final thoughts ahead of tonight's matchup with the Hawks returning back to the UC. Coming up in just a moment here before I wrap things up, I do want to talk for a moment about Luke Richardson electing to bag skate his players following their comeback victory over the weekend. But first, I need to talk to you all about Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Connor Bedard could be on his way to winning the Calder Trophy for NHL Rookie of the Year. Austin Matthews could be on his way to potting 65-70 goals in winning the Rocket Richard Trophy. And the Vancouver Canucks are duking it out with the Boston Bruins and the Florida Panthers. It's going to be interesting to see which one of those teams wins the President's Trophy. But you could be winning alongside all of them by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. And Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey because with sleeper you can win a hundred times your cash in daily fantasy contests and all you have to do is pick whether studs like nathan mckinnon connor mcdavid or connor bedard will record more or less than their sleeper projections for goals assists saves shots plus minus and more in any given game and again Sleeper offers you the chance to win 100 times your cash, so start paying attention, make the correct picks, and you could be winning real big. And also, be sure to go and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps to get up to an $100 match on your first deposit with Sleeper. Again, that's promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps, and you can go and see Sleeper's terms of use right now if you want more details. <sighs> Back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. 
If you're still tuned into this point of today's episode, let me just say thank you very much. And if you could go and help me out by smashing that like button, commenting down below, and subscribing to the Lockdown Blackhawks YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. That would help me out tremendously. And also, make sure to go and check out the new Lockdown Sports today because Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And Lockdown Sports today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts from Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every single league. So make sure to go and check out Lockdown Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Segment three, despite overcoming a four-goal deficit to beat the San Jose Sharks in their last game on Saturday night, the largest comeback victory from the Blackhawks in well over a decade, actually since that infamous um, five-goal comeback in 2009, against the Calgary Flames in which the Blackhawks found themselves down 5 to nothing they wind up rallying to steal that one 6 to 5 in overtime and that was if you kind of remember to me at least as a young kid that felt like the start of understanding that Blackhawks team and that era of Blackhawks hockey was going to be truly special. It didn't matter if their backs were against the wall. They were capable of overcoming any deficit. And we ended up seeing that time and time again, all throughout their runs. So I did think that um, comeback win against the Flames at the time foreshadowed a little bit uh, everything that the Blackhawks were going to be able to achieve moving forward. I don't think the, the win against San Jose is going to be as much of a foreshadow uh, as the one in 2009, but it does kind of reflect that the Blackhawks have this never say die attitude right now under head coach Luke Richardson. Uh, even though, you know, it's obviously been a very tough season, they still never quit. And they've, they've picked up um, a couple of really nice comeback victories here uh, so far in the month of March. But with that being the case, Luke Richardson, what, what I like to see is um, on, on Monday is the Blackhawks return back to Chicago Luke Richardson elected to bag skate his players following a very intense practice as well on Monday morning. It was the type of practice that you would usually see during like the summer months or during training camp when you're trying to condition players and get them ramped up and, and ready for the season. But we actually got the rare bag skate here in the month of March, but I do think it was absolutely warranted from head coach Luke Richardson. And I think there are times where he absolutely needs to put his foot down. You got to pick and choose those battles too with the team that loses as much as the Blackhawks do, right? You, you lose, you know, five to nothing against the Los Angeles Kings. I don't know if that's really one where you can go barking at your players and go and put your foot down and bag skate them because that's just going to happen when you play higher quality competition. But when you play like the Blackhawks did, against the Anaheim Ducks in that next game of their West Coast road trip. And then to follow that 4 nothing embarrassing loss up with the opening 20, 25 minutes that they did against San Jose, it was absolutely unacceptable. And I'm glad to see Luke Richardson knows that even though his team was able to come back, it still is absolutely unacceptable for the Blackhawks to go and have that type of effort throughout that three-game road trip. And they very easily could have come away with an 0-3-0 record um, before returning back to Chicago. So even though it was a beautiful comeback by the Hawks, it still was really a dreadful performance in all three of those games. And yeah, they got away with the win in San Jose, but against basically anyone else in the NHL, that probably isn't going to be good enough. And I like to see Luke Richardson recognize that, address that, and hold his team accountable like he did on Monday morning. And I thought the quote that he gave to the Blackhawks media following the practice was pretty spot on as well. He said, I know we skipped out of that game luckily on top, and that's great on them that they were able to do that. But if we go back two games, we weren't happy with our performance in the two games. That's just not professional for me. You have to do it every single day. And that's exactly it. You have to provide the same effort every day you know, night in and night out. And that's something that's gotten away from the Blackhawks so far this season. It's been spotty. You know, you'll have um, an opening 20 minutes like we've seen time and time again here in the month of March where they just look kind of lost, but they'll be able to figure it out. The issue for the Blackhawks this year is they haven't been able to string together consistent period after consistent period. And yes, sometimes you have to recognize that's going to happen with this team against better quality of competition. But against a team like the San Jose Sharks, there's no way the opening 25 minutes of that game should have went down the way that they did. We're talking about the post-trade deadline 
San Jose Sharks as well. And I also like to hear Luke Richardson um, during that first period after the Hawks fell behind 2 nothing, gave a little bit of a fiery speech behind the bench as well and couldn't wait to get into the locker room during the first intermission. And, you know, Ryan Donato said it was a little bit scary. You know, Luke is usually a pretty calm and collected guy, but when he barks at you, you know, he's, he's, he can get fiery and he can get on you. And I, I think that's also um, a sign of a guy that understands, like I said earlier, just when he needs to pick and choose his battles. And Luke is obviously a very respected guy in that locker room, commands a lot of respect and everyone only has good things to say about him. And, um, he always seems rather relaxed when he's talking to the media, but you know there are times when his buttons get pushed and he needs to let it out. And I think that was a perfect time against San Jose to let it out. I thought it was a perfect reaction despite the Blackhawks coming back to go and bag skate his players and make sure that they understand that the effort level needs to be better on a more consistent basis. And I think that's going to be a bigger and bigger focal point for this Blackhawks squad as they start to get more and more competitive the, the the energy and the fire that they bring on a nightly basis is going to become more important. You can kind of, yeah, get away with it a little bit right now when the Blackhawks are rebuilding, but when this fan base actually expects people to win and so does the organization, uh, performances like that against San Jose, even in a comeback win fashion, isn't going to cut it. So I like to see Luke Richardson recognizing the situation in front of him very well and uh, understanding that, hey, yeah, we got away with a win, but like I said, against any other team, that's probably not going to be good enough. And moving forward, I understand the Blackhawks are going to want to be a lot better of a hockey team, and they're going to have to put better, uh, put together a lot better efforts to do that in the future. So Richardson, I, I like to see him understand the situation. And I quite, <clears throat> I quite honestly thought he handled it very properly. So um, Blackhawks deserve to be back skated on Monday. They did, and hopefully they respond to that very well in tonight's matchup against the Calgary Flames. All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show, and be sure to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks for free right now, wherever you may be listening to your podcasts, and to go and subscribe to the Locked On Blackhawks YouTube channel. That way, you can get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available each and every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can go and give me a follow on X at Jack Bushman too. And make sure to also go and follow my Strictly Blackhawks account as well at Talk and Hockey. So that way you can get all of the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.